This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to part two of this incredible bill from the good folks from Bandai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 1-100 scale Master Grade 00XN Riser from the popular anime series 00 Gundam. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back my dudes and dudettes to part two of this incredible build from the good folks from Bandai and if you're new to this YouTube channel, welcome! And if you dudes and dudettes want to check out part one, I'll leave a link for you guys in the upper left hand corner for you guys to check it out. Now let's jump into the meat and potatoes of the none other than the 00 riser. As for the first page, we're going to get a beautiful illustration of the front and back side of the 00 riser followed by the O riser weapon extension and the granddaddy feature of this model kit is going to be the twin GN drives. Now to make these GN drives look really cool, you're going to need to purchase close to not one, not two, but close to five LED lights to power on both GN drives, both GN condensers, and as well as the LED light head. It's kind of a bit of a stretch, but that's how it works. Next page up gives you a nice background lore of the 00 riser in the anime series and a beautiful Beautiful color chart to do some custom paint job if you choose to do so and at the very bottom once again pushing that LED gimmick to make the LED lights look really cool for the 00 Gundam's head which is really nice but the color is not consistent like you would see in the anime so do yourself a favor and look for a proper blue LED light and at the very bottom more inside out features of the O riser weapon attachments more shots of the weapon accessories and a beautiful guide to put the sticker decals once you get this guy fully assembled which is nice and at the same time this model kit does come with water slide decals so it definitely gives you the options to flip between the two. Overall impressions, this kit is really awesome and I look forward to diving into it. So what can we expect for the first runners? First runners up, you're going to be happily greeted with the first batch of water slide decals, which I believe is for the XN riser, followed by the granddaddy color scheme of the yellow, red, and white pieces, two little pilot figurines of Cessna FC, and one clear red jewel. Next runners up, you can get the classic medium blue pieces followed by these aquamarine clear pieces for the GN Soar, GN Condensers, you name it, this guy's packed up with more clear parts, more effect parts, more turquoise blue pieces, more medium blue pieces, a handful of interframe pieces for the main shoulder, interframe for the main body, more interframe pieces for the weapon accessories and for the interframe, and a small plethora of white pieces. Now the one thing that kind of gets me a little pissed off is this model kit only comes with one Bendai LED light. You're going to need close to not one, not two, but close to five LED lights to make this guy look like how it is in the anime. So before we get started doing any kind of custom installation, I need to take a step back and jump into doing custom scribing. Now the last time I did this was the Perfect Rate RX-78-2 Gundam, and I had a lot of fun doing that but it's almost been close to two years and I'm really, really rusty. So I tried dabbling into doing it with some parts of this model kit. Unfortunately, some lines weren't consistent, but it turns out that the blades that I were using were either dull or they were cheap. So next time I'm just gonna buy a proper high-end scribing tool to make the job look nice.
All right, my dudes and dudes, now this might sound weird, but just hear me out. So when I was trying to figure out how to put in the LED light for the leg, I had only two options, put an LED light in the center or just work around it. But it turns out when I was going back into the garage to finish up my project, the light was refracting such in a weird way in my lower part of my stool, it created this beautiful halo effect. So it turns out that I just need to put an LED light in the upper left hand corner, and then it'll end up refracting the plastic the way how I want it. This helps out tremendously because I don't want to actually have like a focal point in the center of the leg to make it look really awkward.
all right by using this. So this part is going to be kind of tricky to explain, so I will try my best to really comprehend what I'm basically doing. So putting an LED light in the wrist is a no-go. It's just the way how the plastic design is just not really good and sturdy to put a very small LED to make that effect look the way I want it. Now I do have a small enough LED to put be put into that wrist, but at the same time it's going to be limited to do any kind of form of like dynamic poses. So if you go this route and try to put a small LED light in there, which I would recommend like a Z LED light from Evans Design, you can pull off that effect, but you're going to end up having this model kit being a statue. And that's not what I really want to go with this model kit. So what I'm basically going to be doing is targeting all my energy on the elbow LED light. There's enough cavity space to work there, while at the same time, there's plenty of room for me to do some custom work. Okay, so here's the hard part of this model kit. So I've already taken the time to actually do a pre-drill hole inside the elbow to really make room to put in a very small Pico LED light to rest in there. Now comes the challenging part. There are two interconnected pieces that is definitely gonna prove to be a problem of putting a very small thin LED light from the bottom all the way up to the top. And as you can clearly see here, there's a lot of tension in between this plastic piece, but I still wanna get that nice full bend to make that look really cool and, and get that nice aesthetic look to it. So in this hollowed out area, I'm gonna actually have to do some custom drilling. At the very top of the nub, I'm gonna to have to slightly cut in a small slither in there to really funnel in that very thin wire. It is possible in the effect works very well, but there is a risk behind it. Since this is relatively a very, very thin piece of plastic, you are at risk of actually damaging it. So when you actually cut a little groove in between this little nub right here, don't cut it all the way, just cut it just not to the point where you're in the center of the plastic and then funnel the LED light through the main cavity up to the upper elbow and you're good. If you go too far into the plastic or you cut too much of a divot and trying to bend it later on when you're putting this model kit on the shelf, you will break it. Now I'm not saying that's happened to me, but let's just say I've had experience doing something close to this where everything just went wrong. So when you do this process, take your time.
All right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. Now, first and foremost, apologies if I sound a little tired. I've been working on this video for two days straight. It is literally 12 o'clock at midnight and I am tired. So I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through for you guys because I love you guys so much. So let's talk about the goods and bads about this model kit. So first, the bads right off the bat. The kit suffers with poor pegs on the hand. Like what I mean is like when you purchase a Gundam model kit, they have like that nice little divot like square in the center of the palm. So you can attach weapon attachment, sword, beam, rifle, bazooka, you name it. You know, that's what it's designed to do. Now, when you plug in, say, I don't know, the GN Sword 2 works totally fine. No issues at all. But when you plug in the big man pajama of the GM Buster 3, that's where we have some serious issues. I don't know if it has something to do with the fact how the plastic's molded or the sheer amount of weight that is being applied for this particular plastic. It just keeps falling over and over. It's just, it became really annoying to the point where I was like, you know what, I'll just do what I can and still have fun putting this guy in dynamic poses and just move on to the next pose. So that's like another big gripe. Um, another big concern for this model kit is weight distribution problem, and I am so happy that Bendai actually include a small teensy weensy little action base to really, to really make this guy look really cool in a display case, because that's what this model kit is really designed for. It is not designed to be put on a pedestal and an action base to look really cool. You know, I have probably one of the second most expensive action bases that are available to purchase from Bendai, and even at the tightest setting, on that sucker, it still tends to easel back and it is prone to fall. Plus at the same time, the little uh, connector at the very bottom of the crotch, it's not very secure with that much weight being distributed in the back. So you gotta be very careful with that. So, and then last and finally, the biggest issue is the LEDs. Bendai's nice enough to give you like, I don't know, one. It would have been cool if they gave you like five, you know? just, you know, round this thing up in a nice little bow. But I guess the reason why they didn't include five LED lights, that would have hiked up the price to like $150. That's kind of weird. You know, even though it's a pre Bendai model kit, uh, either way, you, you can still rock it with one LED light. But the wonderful thing I like about this model kit the most is there is still an insane amount of articulation with this model kit that makes things really cool. The fact that there is just enough cavity space in the torso because I didn't need to put in a Bendai LED light, it made it so much easier to hide all the electrical wires and, and hide all the capacitors to really make this guy look dynamic. It just, things worked. And it made so much more sense to do a custom build for this model kit and I had a lot of fun. Now, the one thing I'm a little disappointed in myself, which I will get better over time, is my custom scribing is a bit weak. So I think towards the end of the year, I'm gonna get back into doing some custom scribing on some model kits. I don't know which one I'm gonna tackle next, but I'm definitely gonna investigate a better tool set so that way I can make the effect look really good and somewhat professional because I miss doing custom scribing and I had a lot of fun doing it on the Perfect Grade uh, RX 78-2 Gundam. So I want to get back into doing it. I'm more comfortable working with custom scribing on bigger kits, nothing smaller because there's just very little real estate to work with. So overall consensus with this model kit, it was fun to build. Um, would I recommend picking it up? Yes. Um, the price is affordable, gives you a great range of water slide decals, dry transfers, and sticker decals. You get one Bandai LED light, which you have to purchase a battery separately, which is really unfortunate. I mean, you know what? It was still a great kit to build. I had so much fun building this guy, and the fact that there was plenty of cavity space in the torso to put in custom LED lights, ugh. Icing on the cake. Would highly recommend you check out this kit if you guys like to. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. A big thank you for the new subscribers that came in the end. A big thank you to the new patrons. And a big thank you for you dudes and dudes for liking and sharing this video. It helps the channel grow tremendously. And as always, I will see you dudes and dudes on the next video. Later.
Thank you.